Hi, I'm Andrew with NVIDIA and you're watching GeForce Garage. On today's episode, we're going to take a little field trip to another garage where my buddy Thomas from Mainframe Customs is going to show us how to use a CNC machine to cut out some really cool custom case badges. Hey, Thomas. Hi. Welcome. What a sweet spot. Thanks so much for having us. Can't wait to see what we're going to do today. Today we're going to be making some side markers for the NVIDIA case uh, out of uh, acrylic. I've laminated together some black and UV green and we'll be cutting those out and uh, actually lighting them up sweet. with LEDs. So what are we going to be cutting them on? Is this the piece of equipment that we're going to be using here? This is a okay. small CNC machine, two foot square, uh, running a, a standard hand router. And nice. It's all under computer control. And this right. is the computer that you use to control the CNC mill. So what software do you use to create the designs? Uh, I create the designs in AutoCAD. I then export that into CAMBAM, okay. which is a computer-aided machining. That generates all the code that you then feed into here. Okay. And then this, this interprets the code and moves the machine. So let's get started on the design then. So Thomas, it looks like you have the design for our custom badge. Can you kind of walk us through the process of how you came up with this design and how you interact with the program here? Well, this is AutoCAD and the design is actually just two dimensional lines, which are then pulled into three dimensions by ex extrusion and then uh, subtracted. Basically a lot like the machining process itself. You draw an outline and then you tell it to take out that part. Sweet. So the NVIDIA name there, that part is going to be extruded? Yep. That will actually be cut out and then there's going to be an inlay piece in, in it as well, so it'll light up. And so when you take this file or this design from AutoCAD and move it to the CAM program, what exactly does that process look like? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to pull the design itself out to a separate drawing file. I'll do a, uh, an export on that. So this is just the logo file itself, nothing else in it. Okay and then do the XF out. So this is a direct exchange file, which is, is file interchange format that CAM and CAD software can use to send information back and forth. So that's that. This is CAM software, this is CAM BAM. All the line work in here is just two dimensional stuff. So there is no depth to it or anything. So what I wanna do is, I usually refer back to this, this will show me how deep I wanna cut for different things. So I'm actually gonna use two different cutters for this. I'm gonna use a larger cutter to cut down quicker and then a smaller cutter to finish cleaning up and to do the small designs. This lettering here and these small parts are actually gonna be done with a 1 32nd inch diameter cutter. There's a lip around the outside and then this is recessed down right. and then this is recessed down further. So I'll use an eighth inch and take most of that out and then come back with the 32nd inch. Okay, so I need to determine the depths of things that I'm gonna do. First thing I'm gonna do is cut this whole thing down to this lower level. Okay, so that's the thickness of my sheet now. So now my Z level is at 0.224. So I'm going down 20 thousandths of an inch. If you touch off on the top of the material, you run the risk of crashing the machine because everything you're programming is a Z negative. If you touch off to the table, everything is a Z positive. So anything ends up being Z negative, it's a red flag. Because you're then shaping your table. Yeah, you don't want to cut the table up. So there's the geometry I want to use. And I'm going to pocket it all out. Now it, it adds a machining operation down here. It's going to instruct it. Anything in that area, I want to just completely take it all out. And then you go through and you tell it, you know, more information. So I'm going to go down here, tool, pick my tool from the list. I'm going to use a 1 8 inch O flute end mill. And then you want to give it a clearance plane. What that is, is where the bit will retract to after it's done cutting. So you want to keep that above the level of anything you're using to hold the part down. So my part is about a quarter of an inch thick, so I want my clearance plane to be more than an eighth of an inch. Okay, and then my target depth, 224. Stock surface, 0.25. The depth increment is if you're going to take off less than the amount of depth that you want to go, 
it'll go cut everything and then it'll step down and do it again. You'll see all depth increment a lot more with the 32nd of an inch bit because it can't take that much cutting force. Right. And then you tell it what feed rate you're gonna run. And feed rate is the movement speed? Yeah, it's how fast it'll move when it's cutting. And then a plunge feed rate is how fast it'll go down into the material when it's starting to cut. And I'll go ahead and leave that at 10. And then you can tell it how you want it to lead in. So I'm gonna do a spiral move, like four degrees. And then we can generate the tool pass on there. Now you can see there's that ramp in from your clearance height down to it. And then that's the path that the nose of the tool is gonna to take. That's the center of the very end of the tool. So that's what you're programming is the, the very tip of the tool. And then it takes care of the offset. So if I look at this from above, you can see that it's offset in, so it doesn't follow this edge. It right. goes inward some by half the, the tool thickness. So step one is I've got that cut out to depth. Step two is I've got several more pockets that are cut down from that. So I'm gonna check that location there and that's 0.179. So I'm gonna select this, use the same tool pocket and then I can take this and copy, paste the format, which brought over all the tool information. So then I just need to change my depth. So 0.179 and stock surf, I can tell it that my stock surface is lower, 0.224. So what it'll do is rather than having to ramp that whole thing, it'll just come down close to the surface and then ramp in. And there's the tool path for that. And then that's actually cutting two depths of 0.03. I'm going to give it a little more depth. So it's only going to generate one tool path for that. It'll take less time to cut. Basically, you start big and move down. You're going to take the most material and then work down to taking the least amount of material. Right now, I'm using a larger cutter, so it's going to take out what it can with the bigger tool, where I can use higher speed, take more material out, cut deeper, and then go down to the finer detail tool afterwards. Right. When I'm on the smaller tool, I'm gonna to take another pass around the inside of this to make it a little sharper. Cause you notice this has a sharp corner in it, right. but you're using a rotary cutter. You can't go all the way into that corner. Right. And with an eighth inch bit, it's gonna leave a lot more there than a 32nd of an inch bit. So I'll run a couple of extra passes around that to go further into those corners and take more out. So this one, I just didn't model it that way. This one over here, I actually modeled it so it looks like what it's gonna be done with when, with the cutter. When you select more than one, it'll show you the path between them, right. where right now it's not showing me the paths between the other ones. Right. But I can reorder these as well. So I can move that down so it'll cut pocket one first and then pocket three and then pocket two if I want to do it that way so you can reorder the cuts. You can also segregate them out. So uh, I'm only gonna run all the cuts for this tool, and then I'll do a second program with the other tool. That gives you a chance to then change the tool out, go back and restart it with another, another program and, and run that tool path. All right, Thomas, so we took our design from CAD into CAM for instructions, and now what do we do with those instructions? Well, I'm gonna load them into the software. And this and is the instructions. There is the instructions on the screen for generating the part. And then we're gonna set the machine up. Okay. First off, we've gotta attach the material to the table. Now I need the right cutter. You have a variety of different cutters where this one, the cutter is actually straight and that's what we'll be using for the most of it. Eighth inch. So I've put my eighth inch cutter in here. You know, this machine, we have a jog control here where if I hold down slow, medium or fast, I can then move the X and Y axis and the Z. Okay, so how do you tell the machine where the sort of zero point or starting point of the material is? So this is where I'm going to place the, the X and Y zero. Okay. So that makes sure that I'm not gonna go cut through a screw. So I okay. usually move it a little in from the edge. On the control here, mm -hmm. I'll select the X axis. This coordinate now for X is going to be zero. Right. Okay, you can see it shifted on my screen here. So then here's Y, there's zero. Ah. And then you can see on the screen where the tool actually is by this icon. And then what I want to do is touch off 
for the length of the tool. So what I do now to touch this off is I'm gonna to touch it to the top of the board. So I'll call that zero, because everything I programmed is from up zero. from that. Right. So anything below zero, it's cutting into the table. Anything above, it's cutting into my part. So I'll go slow, jog the tool down until I'm as close as I dare to be. And then the piece of paper is basically to use as a feeler gauge here. And then I can go in here at Z axis, and then I can move in increments of five ten thousandths of an inch. Wow. See, Great. it's dragging. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now, now it don't up. move. That's my Z zero. Interesting. So that is now all set up. Make sure my router is turned back on, set my speed, and it is now ready to run. That's it for that tool. I'm gonna grab the shop vac and I can pull all that off of there. If we look here, you can kind of start to see the outline of the design, but some of the finer parts aren't cut out yet because we're gonna use a smaller diameter tool. And that is a 32nd of an inch. So now we just swap the tools and reset the program with the new instructions for the second tool. Ready? All systems go. There we go. Not bad. Sweet. That thing looks awesome. So this is what it looks like kind of just right out of the machine. And so now what's the next step to kind of clean it up and finish the process? Just a little hand finishing. Okay. Cut off a couple more pieces that didn't cut out. Hand sand it a little bit to remove some of the tooling marks and uh, buff off all the, uh, the leftover tabs. As far as lighting, how exactly are we going to light this thing up? I'm going to actually put it into a, a fixture on the machine okay. so I can recut the backside. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll trench it down a little bit and insert some blue LED strips. 
and blue will kind of make the blue green. makes the green really pop. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and that's what you were showing me in there on your system, where yep. the orange comes through with the with the blue lighting behind yep. it. Yeah, it's all blue lighting, but everything shows orange. Okay. Super cool, man. Well, thanks so much. Um, this is really awesome. Thanks for letting us into your home and your workshop. Thanks for coming. All right. Take care. Wow, thanks so much to Thomas and his family for letting us spend an entire afternoon in his super sweet garage. On the next episode, we're going to learn how to finish off our custom parts and case through the sweet magic of the airbrush. You're watching GeForce Garage, the ultimate resource center for designing, building, and customizing your GTX PC. At GeForce.com slash garage, we have a ton more content for you to check out if you hadn't had enough. If you like this video, there's going to be some more coming up on the screen right now. Boop! Right here. Go ahead and click it. And there's a second video for you to check out right here. Woo! All right. Check that. No, no, seriously, check that.